What's up, guys? This is Keith Kelfis with the Untrapped Podcast, and awesome, awesome. We got Tommy Mello on right now, not only on the podcast on all platforms, but on video too. So if you want to see the video of this, hop over to my YouTube channel. But Tommy, what's up? What's up, buddy? How are you? I just want everybody to see your face and the million dollar smile, man. Tommy Mello is awesome. And also to me, because he's from, from Michigan, here's a guy who hustled from the ground up and built a multi-million dollar garage door company. Uh, they did $35 million last year. And Tommy's quickly rising up as uh, a staple in our industry and somebody who really has like true hustle to millionaire uh, story. Like It's like a rags to riches story. This guy has a book called Home Service Millionaire very smart guy. You sent me a copy of this last year. It's been on my bookshelf and I've already read most of it. It's a phenomenal book because it's, it's like pure grit and hustle, just all value, not a lot of BS in here. But Tommy, how are you doing, man? I'm great, actually. It's nice. I got great weather. You know, a lot of people are worried. The grocery stores are full of uh, people. Toilet paper is all gone. But uh, as far as I'm going and the company's going, we're handling it well. Nice, nice. So, yeah, man, uh, I can feel it too. It's all over in the air right now, and it's uh, it's important to talk about it because it's on top of everyone's mind. And I want to pivot a little bit in, in this podcast, talk about uh, the mindset because, I mean, you've come out of 2008. You know what it's like to hustle through hard times and the people who, um, who stick their head in the sand or hide and cur- curl up in a ball are the ones that uh, – May, can't recover. Can you can you talk a little about those things and your mindsets, how you got to where you're at now and your plans into the future? Yeah, you know, we, we went through a depression uh, about as worse as it gets there, 2007, eight. And I think the main thing is I learned how to hustle. Like you said, I built relationships. Relationships are foolproof. So relationships are great to have. Uh, learn a lot about marketing and about hiring and about training, recruiting, all that stuff. And uh, the goal is to be the largest uh, garage door company in North America first, and we're well on our way. And that comes through hiring the right people, systems, standard operating procedures, manuals, uh, great software like Service Titan. And I think one of the biggest advantages I've had is I started the podcast and wrote a book, which I've got all these people to contribute to the book, and a lot of people have contributed. I had you on my podcast probably about a year ago now, and. Uh, that's the great thing is go meet the people you want to become, learn, take a gold nugget out of every book you read. I, I've got 850 on Audible. I read all the time. You can see my bookshelf. And just continue to learn, go to seminars, hire great people to work around you. And that's the key. And as far as this goes, we were kind of set up to go for a rainy day. We pay everybody on performance pay. Uh, we're letting people work from home because we got the technology to do that. Uh, we've got an amazing VoIP system, voice over internet protocol. People can work from home as long as they got good internet. We've got laptops to lend out to people. So I can tell you a lot more. I'm sure you're going to ask a lot of questions, but that's a good overview of where we're at today. And we're, we're prepared for this. I hope it goes quick. I hope it's quick and easy. But this is the time that there's big, big, big winners, and there's a lot of losers. So time will tell. Uh, we're going to be one of the winners. I could guarantee that just the way we're set up. Awesome. So because you went through 2008 and you have that in the back of your mind uh, and everything that you do, probably, I I know that, that I do, but it's the difference between, and that's, that's a huge point right there because your mindset is rooted in the right place. You're thinking about the ups and the downs. What about um, maybe guys who are in the first few years of their small business? How can they understand the seriousness of how hard it is to, to focus on what needs to be done versus focusing on Maybe, maybe the news every 20 seconds. You know, it, it, it's going to hit different industries differently. Uh, we've got a global economy. We've got a supply chain. China was hit bad. That's going to affect a lot of things that are, as far as our receivables. I talked to a buddy of mine, uh, one of my vendors actually in San Diego. He said there's more ships on the port that aren't getting emptied than he's ever seen before. It, it's going to be a trickle down effect. So you got to start thinking right now about some of the things like uh, your vendors. Uh, extending your payments. Don't pay towards principal right now. Be cash strong. Uh, get with the SBA. The SBA is going to be coming out with a really good loan to get by the short term. Be on top of this. Don't borrow the money when you need it. Borrow the money before you need it. Uh, cash reserves are great. I know people didn't plan for this, but in the future, what I've learned is always to have cash. We've got a lot of cash on hand. We're ready to loan people money. We're, we're, we're really promoting a healthy environment, but uh, 
we're sending out messages every day, but more importantly saying we're prepared. We're optimistic. When this ends, we're going to be firing all cylinders. We're looking for those guys that want to work early mornings, stay late nights, work weekends. There's people that are going to come out of this and want to sell. They're going to say, I'm not going to go through this again. They're ready to retire. They lost everything. Look, the, the Dow today, it's fluctuating between 20,000 and 21,000. It was at 28, 29. People lost a third of their money. A lot of people, the, the crypto is way down. Interest rates are really low. Stuff is just changing and it's those who panic that make the biggest mistakes. They say sell, sell when everybody's buying and buy when everybody's selling. And I've been buying this last week and I'm going to continue to buy on the way down and continue to buy on the way up and then I'll sell. And I'm not looking for a fast flip. flip. I'm looking for long-term gains. And if you look at Warren Buffett, he made all his money in a recession. If you look at, I hate to bring it up, but Donald Trump bought a lot of the real estate when it was really cheap in New York and then it's worth a ton of money now. So yeah, I read in his book, um, The Art of the Deal, he bought 40 Wall Street skyscraper for a million dollars. And then within 24 months, it was worth 200 million. Uh, it's crazy. It's insane that you'll never see stuff like that again in history, but it looks like now we're seeing things like that. So what is it about you and, and your mindset and your ability? So if some guys can't think past maybe a half a million bucks where other guys are a million I'm really fascinated by this and I really want to ask you this and for the guys that watch and listen to my podcast as well is you can't hustle and work your ass off. You can't hustle to 35 million as far as just working a hundred hours a week. There has to be a completely different mindset for you to get to the point where you're even paying attention to the market like you are. Can you talk about some of the key points in your life and in your journey that helped you have these, these huge insights? So I got to start thinking differently. Like what does that look like? You know, there's a lot there. I would tell you this. There's certain things that are going to be catalysts for your business. I think having that number one person, there's a, there, there's a, a visionary and an integrator relationship. And I'm more of the visionary and I needed to find an integrator. He came aboard Adam in 2015. He's more day-to-day -day operations. I told him when he started, he's going to be the bad guy. I'm going to be the good guy. Uh, I've got a vision and the vision has changed from a hundred million to a billion. So your mindset needs to be instead of, well, a billion dollars, two years ago, everybody would have looked at me and laughed and said, you're freaking nuts. But I look at a billion and then I work back, back and I say, well, how many technicians do I need? How many jobs do I need? Technicians and jobs. Now, there's a lot of fundamentals, booking rates, average tickets, conversion rates, all things that go into that. But I basically said, okay, I need to set up a system to get to 50 guys a month onboarding. I need them to do 500,000 a year, which that number is going up. And I need to do that for three years and I'll have over a billion dollar company. So then you got to start thinking about if that's your mindset, how are we going to go into cities? How are we going to take market share? How are we going to do acquisitions? What kind of marketing is going to deliver calls under a hundred dollars? How do I improve conversion rates, keep customers coming back, sell service agreements? All these things come from setting a goal and working backwards and don't settle for little goals. Every time there's a new goal, every year I reevaluate and say, you know what? What do we need to do really? We need to be a recruiting machine. We can't just be putting an ad in Craigslist and, and these different job boards. We have to go recruit. So I look for amazing people and I teach them the skill. And uh, I used to think hire a salesman, teach him the service side. Now I'm kind of hire the person, get somebody that's really great, that smiles a lot, that's got enthusiasm to work hard. They pick up stuff, even if they're not good with the drill, they'll learn it. And if they're not great at sales, I've made sales into a procedure. It's not, you don't have to be a used car salesman. It's simply follow my eight step sales process because it works every single time if you follow it and learn it. And uh, another catalyst for me was uh, getting the right software. The software is now the operations of the company. We use Service Titan. There's a lot of great uh, CRMs out there. Uh, we use Paylocity for payroll that does a lot of stuff. It updates our manuals every month. People have to sign off whenever we update anything. Uh, online signatures to make sure everybody and all the staff's getting paid correctly. We use uh, some other stuff like Power BI to see deeper insights of the company. I like to look at a graph and see a picture of what's going on with the entire company with all this different things like balance sheet. Uh, we got income statements, P&L. So I, I don't know what the cat, the biggest catalyst was getting my number one guy, building the amazing team, and getting a software to know what's going on at all times within the business and making sure that you can't fool the system. So right now payroll takes us about two hours every other week. It used to take us 40 hours a week. 
So the software has actually gave us that competitive advantage. And I think marketing is a big advantage. And then sales, you know, we're not cheap. People want it done fast, they want it done right, and they want it done cheap. You can only get two out of the three. You'll never get all three. So we decided we're going to be fast. We're going to do the job the best of our ability with the most expensive, longest warranty parts. We're not going to be the cheapest, but we're going to be the best value. I'm letting all that sink in. I'd like five questions and you answered all of them while you're, dude, it's good. I like it. And because I was talking about um, one thing that popped up in my head that pops up in people's heads that are smaller is the man hour rate and making sure there's enough profit margin so they don't get trapped. And it sounds like you, you talked about building, uh, starting from the end, the vision and working your way backwards. What do things need to be? So, uh, Okay, so what, what is it in your mind that makes you want to take on that level of uh, responsibility and that level of risk? Is it, is, it, is it a deeper reward? Is it leaving a legacy? What is inside of you that wants to take on that level? And like, what's going on in your head? Well, if I struggled to get where I'm at today, I would probably want to exit a lot sooner. But the problem is I still think we're in the fetal stages. I look around me. And I see a bunch of people ready to retire. I see people saying it can't be done in this industry. I see people saying you can't charge this much, but I, I haven't seen the numbers change since 1990. So we've got five-star reviews everywhere. We make sure customers are happy. We're not a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. All of our trucks are $50,000 trucks. We show up when we say we will. We do driving record, drug test, background check. Make sure the people are approachable, who you work with, you'd have around your family. And, uh, we're really nice to people here. You, it's a pleasure to work with us and it's a pleasure to work with our customers and, and everybody here is our internal customer. So we have to be great leaders. And for me, I saw an opportunity to take this whole industry and it's not just me, it's everybody around us. It's our vendors. It's, it's the different companies we work with and we're at these shows every year. We just went to the International Door Association. We meet a lot of companies I hope garage door companies listen to my podcast. I'm there to let them come in and see what I do. I don't need a lie cheater still. People think that I got this secret, you know, we do this, we do this, we do this. And I see these guys on, on uh, Facebook and these forums and they're like, they're so happy when they could fix a 1962 opener instead of just replacing it. And they're so happy because they're all technicians. You know, I had Michael Gerber on my podcast a couple of weeks ago. And they're all great technicians. They haven't learned to be a manager or an entrepreneur. The entrepreneur in them went out and said, let's start a business. The reason why they started a business is because they said, I want financial freedom. I want to be my own boss and I hate working for somebody else. But there needs to be a deeper why than that. I want to create something that no one else has ever done. And I've got the capacity to do it now. And then on top of that, you know, people ask, well, who do you have around you? Who's your family? I said, my mom and dad are supportive. I have a sister. I'm not married. I don't have kids right now. I want to get married and have kids. But what I would tell you is the significant others, just remember why you started. It's not so they could work for you. It's not so you could hide and not pay your taxes. It's not so you could work from home. You started the business to make their lives better and give them more time of you around with your kids. You didn't start a business so you could work 80 hours a week, not have vacations, and basically want to kill yourself because you you've got a glorified job. You're not making money. And people say, well, I made 200,000 last year. I'm like, well, how much did the company make? Well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you could pay yourself 200,000 and the company should still make five to 20% depending on the industry and the home service. But your company needs to make margins. You should have nice computers, nice phone systems. You should be able to do nice things for your employees, like take them out to eat sometimes. You should be able to really have the air conditioning in Arizona on cold in the summer and not have to worry about your your bills as far as your electricity goes. So th there's a lot that I, I keep unpacking here, but I would just say that the people that start a business, most of them have no right to be in business. They should be employees. And so many people, they struggle, they struggle, they struggle. I, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I got a master's degree in business and most of that is not even applicable. But one thing I learned is how to be nice to people and build relationships and actually get from them what I want to hear. That's why I have the podcast. I fly out and see bigger shops, $100, $2 million, $200 million shops. And I take pages and pages of notes. More importantly, I go and I start what they taught me. I say, wow, we need to have a, a process for apprentices, then move them to junior tech, then tech, then senior tech, then field supervisors. We need to have managers doing this, 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 and this. 
We need to have key performance indicators. We need to set goals higher. You, if you were to tell me, let's move up 10%, I'd laugh at you. I don't want 10%. Eventually, we're going to start growing in hundreds of percentiles again, but it, it starts with this. Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC, opens a new store every eight hours. Why? Because they're systematic. Every eight hours, there's a new KFC around the world. Think about what your system and your process need to be like that because the systems dictate everything. How you hire the right people, how you interview the right people, personality profiling, how you train them, how you retain them. And when you get the system dialed in, and the, the small guys, I'll tell you this, the small guys, they do a little bit of commercial, a little bit of residential, a little bit of stuff for Home Depot, a little bit. And I'm like, you guys are jack of all trades. You haven't specialized in anything. You got to have a different truck set up for each thing. You got to have different insurance policies for each thing. You need to have accounts receivable for that. You need to have, they have no idea, but they're, they're, they're a lot like me. I used to take on everything that crossed my path. And now it's all about focus. Focus your energy on one thing and be the, the monster, the master, the, the Messiah, everything that you could think of in that one thing. If you're going to do commercial, be the best at it. If you're going to do residential, be the freaking best at it, but don't do eight things. Well, like I said, I go on a lot. I'm sorry. That's good, man, because that's like the exact opposite of uh, guys that are just getting started. Who, I, When I started my small business, I was literally do anything to pay my bills and I was desperate. And now I've painted myself into a corner where I'm over diversified and I have to make some drastic decisions and cut a service in order to focus down because it's just too confusing. And um, so I'm getting coaching on that myself right now. Now, have you had to get coaching? Do you, are you plugged into an inner circle, a group of mentors and people that you uh, talk to when you're making decisions? What type of tough decisions have you had to make? Yeah. You know, first and foremost, I've definitely had a cons consulting done. I usually have at least one consultant at all times, specializing in different things. Uh, the next big thing for me is acquisitions. Um, so I find masters of the trade and the podcast has really given me a good lever to meet these people. Uh, when I met Al Levy, he's the seven power contractor. He said, dude, you got to get your manuals. You need exact procedures and policies and everything written down and learn how to delegate and get organized. And he's super organized. So he helped me out a ton. And the people in my life, I've got probably 10 people I could call at any given time for any advice. And I always run things by a lot of people. And the inner circle here at the shop, the, the five senior managers, and then we have a bunch of other managers, we always, there's no wrong answer, but if you come with a problem, I need you to come up with a solution. And, you know, it's really tough because what happens is the dispatchers get mad at the CSRs, the, the CSRs and the, the technicians are always feuding with each other. So we've created some harmony here. Uh, and then the next thing is market managers say, well, I hate Arizona because they're always changing things on us. So we started to communicate and have better meetings. And as you figure out one thing, you kind of, my, my whole philosophy has been nail it and scale it and make it work in the hub and then make the spokes follow. And marketing is, in my opinion, probably the most important thing of where people fail. Uh, it's interesting because I just read a quote earlier, uh, basically, Henry Ford, I believe it was, uh, said, to stop advertising to make more money is like stopping a clock to save time. So you don't save money. You cut, you cut people that are way overpaid. You cut the things that you're paying for that you never use. And I'll tell you what, this last year for me has been more about, forget revenue, forget, forget the millions of dollars of revenue. Start thinking about how much are you taking home and how much can you reinvest in your company for growth? Because Revenue is for vanity and profit is for sanity. And I'll tell you this, profit is, I, I get so happy when somebody says I do 10 million, but I do 20%. That's more, that's more, better for me than a 20 million that's doing 5%. So start thinking more about profit because that's going to cause your business to grow. And all the small guys, here's what they do. They've got nice equipment all around them. You know, they buy a nice house. They go buy two RVs. They got the ski dudes. They got the second house. They don't reinvest in the company and that's what stops them from being a 10, $20 million company. Imagine if you were to reinvest your profits for 10 years, what that company would look like. You, you might not be able to do as much as have these, all these RVs and these brand new trucks and these expensive $80,000 cars, but your business would be worth tens of millions, if not 20, 30 million. So what I have, what I've always believed is it's, it's sacrifice today or regret tomorrow. So that's a great thing. Put that on your wall, sacrifice today, don't get everything you want 
or it's going to be regret tomorrow. If anything to sacrifice your time with is to spend it with your family and never miss out on the reason you got into business. You didn't go into business to work 80 hours a week, but when you do, save it and get ahead and be prepared for times like these with this coronavirus where we're going to come out. There's winners and losers. We're going to come out the top in the industry. I guarantee you that because we're set up for it. That's deep. Now to dial that into the daily things that people can do, what are some of the daily routines that you do? Like, what does your day look like? What does your health look like? You going to the gym and how will you maintain, uh, probably not going to the gym now if they're shutting those down, but how do you maintain your finger on the pulse of your business, but also your personal life and your health? So you stay in a, in a, a healthy place physically and mentally, and you're always on the charge and how do you recover? So I think you got to have some leisure time. You got to spend time with family. I think we have a gym here that we built. It's a really nice gym here at the office. I've got a Bowflex select weights here. I've got another thing in my office. I've got a fireplace in here. I made this a place that I enjoy coming. I've got a shower in my office. So I built it for a place that I enjoy coming to. I've got big buck hunter, golden tea. I've got pinball machines. I've got three massage chairs upstairs. I've got air hockey. I've got, uh, ping pong. We made this a place that's going to be fun to work at. Number one. Number two is I like to go golfing. I like to go to movies. I always do that stuff. Uh, But when I work, I have fun. I'm one of the crazy guys that actually enjoy what I do. I have daily meetings. It's called a morning mojo call. Communicate with what we did well that day. I've got this piece of paper that comes every single day. It's on my desk. Every single day, Pat leaves it on my desk. This tells me the top three guys in the company. The CSR is over 90%. How many the door department got scheduled? Every guy with a conversion rate below 80%. I know every single disciplinary issue on this day, there was eight. Let's see, no picture of check. No notes on why money wasn't collected. No picture of check. Wrong items used in the price book. This one shows me in the recruiting on this exact day, how many applicants we got, how many were auto-rejected, how many were screened, how many moved to the next uh, interview. This one tells me every single canceled job for this day and why they got canceled priority levels. So competitor got the job, here's one. If I go through these one by one, said he didn't want to reschedule, starting to look to work properly, customer not wanting service. So there's notes in every single thing. The process has dictated the output of everything I do. Every time I come up with something, I create a system around it and it's gotta be replicable. And now I'm like this, we're creating such a great system that'll work anywhere that I'm just, we're going to just go take market share everywhere we go. And, and my hope is this people want to join us rather than be our competitor. Cause they're going to, I invite them in. I had 30 other garage door companies in here. I showed them my CRM. I walked them around. I showed them our training center. I have nothing to hide. And I think the fact that we're open, we're telling everybody what we're doing. We're not keeping a secret and trying to come in and, and steal people's income. We're coming and say, join us. Let us teach you. We're not your enemy. We're your friend. We're your ally. We're trying to improve the whole industry. I want to uh, interject. You just gave me a kind of an aha that I want to share and dial into a little bit. When you were reading that off on the paper, how you've got all this systematized, there's this tone of voice that you had that, and for you guys listening, this is, listen to this. What I see is like, what if your laundry hamper was right there but you kept taking your clothes off and throwing them on the floor next to the hamper and then later around having to pick them up and put them in the hamper at some point or, or throwing them on the floor you would just get a hamper and put them there it seems to me and there's things that i've put into my business some marketing systems that we're working on uh, i mean that are already implemented we're working on more now because it was such a a, a a pain in the ass and a hassle to manually do all this stuff i'm like wait a second these softwares are available i just need to take the time and get in and dig into the stuff. And now I'm so glad we did it. But to you, it's like, it's stupid or or very inefficient to do it the other way. And it seems like you've just keep doing this and doing this. And it's like a light. The more you see is the more that you see that you don't see. And then you're just running around, turning all the lights on. Like you've gotten to this point where to not do that is a very inefficient and almost bonehead thing to do. It's just obvious to you. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Like your brain has opened up in that capacity to now where you're like, of course, you know? Yeah. Well, there's this, I'll tell you this, we were in four markets and this is uh, this is a shot of my own medicine. Uh, We were in four markets. We had poor leadership. We weren't set up to do what we were now. This was over a year ago. I had to shut down four markets. I moved a couple guys. It just, when I got, when you, the financials are everything. You make decisions based on financials. So I'll explain a few things here. 
if you've got a set amount of what you're going to spend in marketing, here's what happens. Let's just say it's 10%. Let's say you do a million dollars. That's a hundred thousand in marketing per year. You need to balance that over 12 months. You need to know where you're going to spend it. You need to understand your pay-per-click, how much you're going to put towards organic. Google's God, Google local services. Then you're going to spend it on mailers or, or radio, whatever you decide. But what happens when you reach your budget? And let's say it's January 20th and you've used your budget for the month. What happens is your brain starts to go to this resource center and say, I need to create jobs. I need to call past customers. I need to network more. I need to get these guys going and do whatever they could. When they're at the restaurant, they're going to introduce themselves to people and ask them if they need service. You start to get more resourceful instead of throwing money at it. So what I've learned to do is put a lot of money away and say, this is what we got to work with. So a lot of people, they say, we've got all this money to work with. They're not putting anything away. And balance sheet and income statement should be God. You should understand everything in there and Certain people, I'm really good at generating revenue. I've learned this last year how to generate profit and keep more of it. And I've had to turn a lot of stuff off. I've had to get very, very lean. I've had to get more resourceful. And that's what I'd recommend is start to look at your business and say, when you've got the numbers, look for the outliers and say, whoa, I've got, we're in 17 markets. I compare market to market to market. I look at our best performers and I see on the balance sheet, is it marketing? Is it operations? Is it, and I can identify it. And then we've got performance improvement plans. For everybody. And it's not a write-up, it's an improvement plan. What could we do better? And everybody should have it. And you know, I'm performance pay. If the company doesn't make money, I don't make money. So everybody here, we've managed a way to find out what matters and really keep a good score of that. And when you could do that, hundred million is a lot of money to me. Look, I'm the guy that still shops sometimes with coupons, but it, my vision is a billion. And when it's in your head, when it's written down, when you actually believe it, you find a way to get there. When you believe that you're sick, you find a way to make yourself sick. When you believe there's a way, and we created a highway to get there really, really fast. And people say, well, that's going to take 15, 20 years. And I say, no, 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 no. What do we need to do today? So you break it down in a year, then quarterly, then monthly, then weekly, then daily, and say, here's what we need to be working on. Here's what we need to be working for. And to have a great software that spits out accurate numbers and real data it's crazy. So what I would advise to the small companies out there, find a good CRM that you're going to grow into. Act like who you want to be. If you want to be a $5 million company and you're 500000 a day, you need to act like an adult and act that way to your employees. You should have the jobs that you're going to need to hire. You should build. So this is huge to me. People put it on, on their applications or, or their, their job, uh, what they put, what they're looking for is must be, must be only certified, da, 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 da. And I'm like, dude, ours say, great place to work. We're going to train you. Great environment. We're going to have fun. The main thing is that you have time with your family. This is a job, but we're going to enjoy it. We're going to give you insurance. We're going to give you a truck, an iPad. We're going to give you the training. We're going to give you paid time off. This is going to be so much fun. By the way, we do garage doors. And all of a sudden, we started to get hundreds and hundreds a week. Oh, that's a huge shift because we're hiring a foreman right now. And I, I started to cringe down as some guys can relate to this, like, must 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 have all these things oh yeah god you're so right and if i talk about the culture of how this is going to be a fun place to work which it is and i am a cool boss to work for um and what else we have barbecues we had a huge barbecue the other day what else we we uh a lot of people went to spring training last two weeks ago before they shut it down what else we just bought a limo bus to have fun with our staff we've got Tons of tickets each week every time that the, uh, the soccer game plays. I'm getting baseball tickets. We're getting basketball tickets. And you might say, well, that's easy to say when you got a ton of money. But what if I told you you could do both? You could just have get-togethers at your house. If you're small, trust me, I remember being small. I remember I had – this is not that long ago. I had to use my points on my credit cards to give out Christmas bonuses. And I can tell you I've been into debt. I've owed over a million dollars on my Amex. It's paid off now. I've gone the opposite way and I'm speaking from all the mistakes. Don't think I'm speaking from this guy that's done it all right. I'm speaking from a guy that's made every single mistake there is. I've got a wrap shop. I've got an auto shop. I've bleeded money from every single corner. I've made crappy loans. Everything you can think of, I'm speaking from, but I've weathered the storm. I've been through it. And here's the thing about me is you better knock me out because I'm getting back up and I'm going to fight. And that's the thing is, is it's, it's that tenacity. It's that go. It's wanting more. It's saying, give me everything you got. You could bring me down and you could try to tell me that I'm going to fail. Every single person that's quit that's high up management has told me you are going to lose. You're going to fail. You're nothing without me. Every single time it's been a pleasure for them to be gone because their negativity, it bleeds all over everybody. Get rid of those. Even your best performers. I fired two best performers in the last three years 
And it's hard to do, but guess what? It's healthy. So you, you can say all you want about we're going to fail, but the thing is I'm not the guy that fell. And I'm the most competitive guy in the world. These are our core values right here. And number two, aspire to be number one. That, that's me in a nutshell, man. I'll get, one of my managers beat me at ping pong 10 games. So I got went and hired a ping pong coach. <laughs> I don't like to lose. That's awesome, bro. How old are you? I'm up. Well, I'm just at her birthday. I'm 37. It's crazy. So I'm, I'm getting old, I guess. I used to think 30s were old, but now I'm like, shit. 37. <laughs> Interesting. The 20s are your learning years. The 30s are your earning years, right? That's true. And you know what? I'm really, really happy with the way things are going. And, and there's a good book by Michael McCallowitz called Profit First. And it's all about putting away your profit. And I'll tell you what, readers are leaders. And to start your day off right, be reading, do audio books. The biggest thing I'd say is huge for me is spending time with the companies I want to be like. I fly out. I tell them how much I love them. And I ask them the right questions. And they're happy. If someone was to come in my office, and I've had dozens, lots of businesses, come on in. You're more than welcome. The, the hardest part for me is what if I told you eat right, drink a lot of water, no alcohol, no cigarettes, um, work out five times a week. You'd be in great shape, but nobody does it. Everybody knows how to be in great shape. Everybody knows how to get a six pack. It's not a big secret. There's no secret out there. There's good diets, but at the end of the day, be obedient to yourself. That's it. And if you could do that, if you could figure out a way to make sacrifices, and the problem is, is people are scatterbrained when they start business. They have no idea. So they start, they start their day with the easiest thing instead of saying, this is the number one thing. This is the number one thing for me. So this March, you know what my number one thing was? To get 500 applicants per day. I wanted, I'm a marketer. So I need to make the phones ring. I need to have everything happen. The applicants are coming to us. We need to go recruit the best. So I'm coming up with ways. Forget hiring. Go out and find the best person you could find and have them switch over to you because the unemployment rate's low. 84% of people are ready to leave the current job they're at in the next year. Think about that, 84%. So is your best spot to be on Craigslist or Indeed or, or Career Builder or, or Monster or I could keep ZipRecruiter. I could keep going. I can name off these boards. It's great to be on there. But what if you could go find this awesome bus boy that makes you smile every time that's attentive and you say, dude, if ever you look for a career, come to me. Because you can make six figures after six months of your, of your apprenticeship. You can make a lot of money working for me. Ah, search for the right people and recruit them. The yeah, right forget personality. Hiring, recruit. Forget hiring recruit. That's good. I want to ask you who, uh, well, you were mentioning something earlier and I remember reading a book called traction. You're talking about the visionary integrator relationship. You've read that book, obviously, right? Yeah. Traction's one of them. And then the other one is, um, it's by the same author. It's actually all about, it's called, uh, it's like fires. So I got it right. If you get a chance read the 5am club too, but this book is called, uh, 5am club. Is that Robin Sharma? Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Sorry here. It's, it's, I have so many audibles. Rocket Fuel by uh, Gino Whitman. Rocket Fuel changed my life when I first read it. And that's, that's a book by, it's definitely a book you're going to want to read. Um, Rocket Fuel, nice. So, the, so if you look at Walt Disney, his brother Roy was actually the integrator. Walt didn't know what was in the bank account. He had a vision. A lot of times the integrator's got to say, whoa, bro, pump the brakes. You know, we, we don't have money in the account right now. And and unfortunately for me, at a lot of times, I didn't have the right person in the finance department to tell me to pump the brakes. So that's what I'm go, go, go head first. If I would have known, like last year, we slowed down quite a bit. This year, we're speeding up. And next year is going to be this quantum leap. But it's defining, we created a machine now. We recruit, we hire, we orient, and then we, we literally train. And to get to the point where you can get 50 new technicians a month, Think about what that company needs to look like. I've got a full-time recruiter with a recruiter assistant, two full-time traders. I've got a learning management system. We've got this machine going, and that costs a lot of money to build the machine. Now, this, this right here, as you talk about it, I, I try to put myself in your shoes, and it sounds like that could be overwhelming. How do you communicate with that many people per day? So do you have just a few key people you communicate, or do you focus on one thing at a time and you build it out? Because, uh, like. 
how are you, that, that's what people ask the question. If I'm already to my max when we get really busy doing everything I'm doing now to the point of overwhelm where you're only sleeping literally four hours a night to keep it all together, how do you hit the gas pedal and do more? It's not really about doing more. It's about being more. Really Can you talk about like, more. Oh, are you, you more. Can you talk about like, are you getting awesome some feedback here? So, yeah, so you, are you actually, you're pulling yourself back to sit down? Like what I'm asking is your mindset. What does your, your day look like when you're talking about building these things out? Are you, you're building the vision and the idea and handing it off to other people? Yeah, that's a great question. So first of all, you need to have a good organizational chart. You need to understand no one should have more than five direct reports because everybody, if it's filtered all to you. So what, what you got to give is you got to give trust and autonomy to your people, but you also have to have checks and balances. So what I recommend is become a systems expert. Uh, there's a good book called the Toyota way, uh, but learning how to delegate properly is half the battle. I delegate a lot. We have a lot of meetings, but understanding where my roles are, I focus on my strength. If you ever listen to Gary Vaynerchuk, he goes, forget about your weaknesses, hire people around you. I've got an assistant that's more organized and better at time management than I'll ever be. She's amazing. I give her way too much stuff probably, but she handles it all. She does well. We connect on the same level. I've got people that I've got, I've got a head of every department. So I've got the recruiter. Then I got to talk to my marketer and I got to say, Hey, my marketing manager, what do we need to do here? But I'm bringing on new resources all the time. I'm bringing out ways. So one of the things we found that uh, discount tire is a great, great way to find an amazing, we've got guys that work at tire places. It's great. They're the best at what they do. They know how to sell. So what I did is I'm, I've got a scraper being built to pull every single discount tire off of LinkedIn and Facebook. And then we run them through with this thing called a skip tracer. It's 15 cents for contact. And I'm sending them a handwritten letter saying, I want them to work for me to their house. Now this is crazy. You say, wow, what the hell is this guy talking about? But because I've learned a lot and because I've learned softwares and ask a lot of questions. I ask a ton of questions to people that are good at marketing and doing different things. I've learned how to do that. So you should have your five big things you're focused on this, this month and you shouldn't let anything get in your way until those are finished or at least to the finish line. Nothing's ever finished. The problem is most guys hit the finish line, but it doesn't stay implemented. So figure out a way to keep it implemented and move on to that next thing. All right. That brings me to the next thing. And this a, might be one of the most, powerful point to this whole podcast Tommy's ability uh, to say no how did you learn how to say no like what do you say no to and how often do you say no so that I'll tell you what that's a really interesting question because I used to be the guy that's it's so easy to say yes it's so easy to say yes because there's so many good ideas out there and I'm really good if I put my mind to it I know I could accomplish it so saying no kind of in a, in a way to an entrepreneur like me the shiny light guy is saying no means I'm failing. And, but what I realized is keep your eye on the ball. L look, here, here's a simple math. Okay, today we're gonna do, let's just say we do 150,000. Let's say we're at 15, let's just say 20% for easy numbers profit. 20%, that's uh, $30,000 today. Now, there's what's called goodwill that I can go do stuff because I meet people like podcasting and reading books and going and doing uh, an entrepreneurial speech or a keynote. Some people are like, well, you didn't make that much money. But then, so then I ask myself, what is worth my time? Where else? $30,000. Let's just say I work 10 hours a day. I work more than that. Some days I work less than that. Some days I work a lot. So that's $3,000 per hour. So with $3,000 per hour, what else can I be doing other than focus on the major things to grow this company, whether that be marketing. So you got to look and you got to have things that tell you what should my, so here's the deal. You take a piece of paper. I'll teach everybody a quick lesson. Figure out what you want to make, figure out what your percentage is. You want to make 5 million. You're at, so you pretty much what need to do. If you're at 10%, you'll say you want to make 500,000. So times that by 10, 5 million, give me your average ticket, $500. Then you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to say, what's your conversion rate when you're face to face? Then you want to move that back and say, what is your booking rate? And then you're going to want to say, what's your marketing cost? Now, when I do this little exercise, I can fix a lot of stuff and make companies a lot better. But the number one thing I see with businesses of where they screw up is they don't have anything to keep track of any of this stuff. They have no KPIs and they say, I think I'm at about a 90% booking rate. Not a chance. You don't even track that stuff. So tracking it, getting it into a system and having checks and balances is key because you can't fix what's not broken. So 
you say, well, how do I say no? Well, I know what to work on. I know what to say yes to because that's what I should be focused on and should be working on. And I say no to everything else. It's tunnel vision. There's a, two good books I'll give you. Essentialism and the other uh, one is... I read Essentialism last fall an audiobook on a project. Like, changes uh, it, was a, it was amazing. You guys got to read that. I gotta so the other that. one is by Gary Keller, um, The One Thing. And uh, you start getting your eye on the ball and understanding what matters. And understanding... So this is a great exercise too. This is what I give to some of my managers because you get sidetracked and your time gets stolen from you. I hear everybody say, if when I work from home, I get 10 times more done. Well, keep your door shut. First of all, have open hours, work on time management. I want you to build a schedule that every 15 minutes you write down what's going on. I want you to write down on that day, the big three things you want to get done. Put it on the back of your phone. Focus on the number one, the number two, the number three thing. Oh, put it and right focus. on the back of the phone. Right on the back with a little yellow note, what you need to get done today. And don't let anything stop you from doing that. And then every time something stops you, every time there's an excuse, every time someone walks in, you say, well, should that be in the manual? Because here's the biggest thing of insanity is when you tell the same damn 50 people <laughs> every single time. So when it's in the manual, you say, hey, that's on page 34 of your manual. My tech manual is 55 pages. Everything that you need to know except for well, what happens if you're, you know, a worm comes, you know, the weird crap, but build a manual with all the answers, let people know how to win the game, go performance pay and focus on what's going to make a difference in your business and learn one thing, learn how to get stuff done. You see, I used to not spend a whole lot of time in college. I used to go to rate my professor. I, I was pre-dental. I took organic chemistry, biochemistry, anatomy, physiology. I went to five different community colleges to take those because I found the easiest teacher in each one of them. I figured out how to get to the way, the answer I wanted faster. If I needed to get a B, I figured out how to get a B. If I wanted an A plus, I found the teacher to give me an A plus. So you got to think smarter, not harder. And learning to say no, it's something I still struggle at. It's something every entrepreneur is going to struggle at. Managers are good at saying no. Technicians are just hard workers and they want to fix everything and they don't understand key performance indicators, which lead them to get better. The definition, definition of insanity is you keep doing the same thing and expecting different outcomes. And most people do this in business and they just don't get ahead until you stop and smell the coffee and say, this is what's going to fix my business. That's good. That's good, bro. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm thinking about that right now. Uh, in 2019, I got really, really focused and, found some some skills inside of me uh things that i wanted to bring to fruition that took a lot of discipline and oh, i'm sorry it moving into spring of 2020 here that too and i, I have these back-end guilt things because i like i have tuesday night date night with my wife and now i'm gonna have to create some other key things in the week that certain things get done on those days no matter what so i'm not rejecting it's because sometimes you, you said spend time with your family is so important so do you have um, key times that you spend with family members or things that you do, or do you like schedule fun to make sure those things work their way into your schedule? So you don't become, you know, how do you do that? Well, you know, there's different strategies for that. But one thing I try to do is I don't really think that spending time for me with the parents every single night, I think what I try to do is figure out how to spend quality time. So what I try to do is figure out a time to set. And usually it's the beginning of the month is where I say, I got to call this person, my best friend in Montana. I got to make time to do this. And I got to tell you, there's no such thing as a balanced life. Because if you're working as hard as you can, and you're spending all the time with family, you're probably not going to church as much. You're probably not eating perfect. You're probably not working out 18 hours a week. So prioritization is a huge skill and understanding because I know one thing. When I was a kid, my mom and dad got a divorce. Money was the reason why, in my head, they got a divorce. And I said, money's never going to allow anybody in my family to fail again. So I worked really hard at that, and I've almost accomplished my goal. So the next thing is understanding, in my mind, where the next thing's going to be. And, you know, I, I feel like I'm not the most healthiest, but I feel like I'm pretty shaped compared to most entrepreneurs. I work out quite a bit, and I eat somewhat healthy. I mean, I had pizza yesterday, but who's counting? But... um Overall is learning how to prioritize what's important to you because if you think you're going to be everything to everybody, it all fails. You know, it all, it all, you're juggling so many things that the, all the balls fall. So learn to be good at what you're good at. Spend time focusing on what you're great at. And like I said, I'm pretty good at keeping my place clean, but I still have a cleaning lady. 
you know, I'm pretty good at landscaping. I used to have a landscaping company. I could do everything, but I'm like, is this the best use of my time? There's all these things now that I look at and I say, really, is this the best? I don't even go grocery shopping anymore. I don't open up my own mail. I barely look at my own email because I have somebody to do that for me. And people, the biggest thing you got to give up is trust. And a lot of people have a hard time. They say, cause once you get burned once, <laughs> I can never do it again. Smart, smart. So I want to be respectful, respectful of your time, Tommy. Uh, tell everybody here, obviously, your book is awesome. This book is phenomenal. And about your podcast where everybody can find you. Yeah, the podcast is the home service expert. Uh, getting about 20,000 downloads a month now. It's really taken off. Got a lot of best authors. I had you on there. Uh, one thing I wanted to hit on real quick is, is you know, this epidemic that's going around or pandemic. Uh, if, if I could, if you're going to get this out there. I want to tell you guys one thing. Um, well, let's go through a list of stuff. Number one, communicate with your people, your office. Let them know that you're prepared or not prepared. Let them know they shouldn't know they don't have a job in six weeks. I told them we got plenty of cash to the bank. We're willing to do loans. Uh, how we're set up to handle this. If this happens, I said, when we come out of this, what my goals are. Uh, there's going to be a huge opportunity, I believe. A lot of winners and losers. I called all my vendors. I said, make sure you, if I need to do a pre-order right now, I need to make sure that we have plenty because of the supply chain, China, Mexico, Europe, you're going to have problems. There's going to be what's a domino effect of all this, uh, extending payments. Th there's so many things, but th don't, don't stop advertising either. And just think about how to express the message every single day to your people. I walked out there and I joke around. There's 20 people right now in the call center. And I said, everybody say healthy all at once. And I was kidding. And everybody starts laughing. And I'm like, listen, if you feel healthy, if you feel strong, your brain is the most powerful thing. And when you work with us and we have fun at work, you don't have to let these scare tactics. If you walk in, there's some people that will get disease because they're so afraid of it. They're worried all the time that they attract that negativity. And me, I'm taking precautions, but I'm an optimist person. And I think you as the owner of your business need to extend this message out daily, hourly, weekly, you name it and say, we're doing great. We've got a plan. We know what we're doing. And if you don't, obviously I wouldn't keep it a huge secret because you can't leave people. These, these people depend on you. So luckily we're, we're in good shape for this. And I think there's, there's going to be winners and losers. Uh, the home service expert, you got, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. Uh, my email is a one lead manager at Gmail and uh, really appreciate being on here. The one piece of advice I could give everybody is find somebody in your industry that you want to be like, call them up, send them a gift, a FedEx or UPS, something that they're going to actually open and explain to them how you want to come see them for three days. I promise you find a mentor in your industry. That's actually still doing it today. Go shadow them, smile at them, take their notes and go implement it and watch what happens to your business. It's amazing how many people have helped me because I've actually asked them to help. Asked them for help. I like asked. it. Tommy Mello, man, awesome having you on the Untrapped podcast. Again, check them out, the Home Service Millionaire. If you just type that in, your podcast will pop up right everywhere. Home Service Expert is a podcast. Home I, I'm Service sorry, Home Service book. Expert. I was looking at your book here. The book is on Audible. It's way better. I did it myself. I had fun doing it. So, I listened to one post podcast of you for like two hours straight last year, um, and I couldn't shut it off. I was dialed in. Like you were literally breaking down Google, the future of uh, voice, and how oh, you're yeah. fully like you're you're obsessed, man. You're a straight up savage, <laughs> bro. And I heard uh, from a couple of people that went to the Conquer Summit a few months ago. Uh, they're like Tommy Mello. That dude's got a lot of energy in person, bro. I don't know. I wish I was there. I was at the last one, but yeah, right, man, man, that was so much fun. We had a blast. And Brandon's an amazing guy. I talked to Josh Latimer today. You know, they're just, they're so kind. They're so giving. That's what you find with these leaders is you can tap into them and they're great resources and they'll help you. And since Conquer, I've had some people come visit and that's what it's all about is, is giving back. And, you know, I'll tell you what, I don't need a book. I don't need a podcast, but when people call me up, or they text me or they Facebook me and they say, you changed my life. I'm spending more time. I'm a soccer coach for my daughter again. And you saved my marriage. It's not me, but it's the people, the guests, the cute culmination of the whole thing. That just, it's so much better. It's a boomerang. You can throw it out there. It comes back tenfold. So appreciate what you're doing, Keith. And uh, keep up the great work. I saw all the people on your podcast. I think I've had everybody that you've had on. 
And uh, you're an amazing guy. I think what you're doing, what you've learned to do on YouTube and build who you are is just absolutely phenomenal and incredible. Congratulations on all your success. Thanks, Tommy. I appreciate it. And that's Tommy Mello, M-E-L-L-O. Later, guys. Thanks.